Hello. Today we're going to be looking at the Spira Team Planning Board and Iteration Planning functionality. This functionality lets you take your requirements, your user stories, your tasks, and your defects and plan them for your project. We've logged into the system and we have our sample project up. You can see we've selected the library system release one. You can see from this grid, you can choose different releases in the system. When you do that, it will change all the iterations displayed in the grid. So for example, right now I'm displaying release 1.1, which is iterations of one and two. And if I click the mouse icon, moves it to the right, we now move to iterations one, two, and three. This grid will show up to three iterations at a time on the main grid, and you can cycle between them using the arrow keys. For each release, it will display the amount of available time in that release. That's how much time is based on the number of people and the time range of the release. It will show you how much work has been scheduled in the utilized category, and it will show you how much is remaining for the whole release. For each iteration in the release, it will do the same thing. It will show you each iteration together with the date range, the amount of available time in that iteration based on the number of people and the, the date range, how much work has been scheduled, which comes from the requirements, tasks, and defects in the grid, and it shows you the remaining. That's how much time is left. If that time is listed in the red background, like here, that means we've overscheduled that particular iteration, and we would need to add people, extend the dates, or if possible, move tasks or requirements or defects from one iteration to the next. If I go back to my first release, you'll see the same thing. Here we have three iterations in this release, one, two, and three, and we can see that our second iteration is overscheduled. In this situation, what we can do is move some of our tasks, these are the items with the little task icon, from this iteration to the next one. That will then bring that iteration under schedule. We now have time remaining, and if we had three hours worth of work, for example, here, we can bring this one back, and now we've optimized our schedule. You can see very clearly for each iteration which requirements, which defects, and which tasks have been scheduled for it. Then underneath that, we have the product backlog, and that shows you all the requirements, all the tasks. Task right here, there's some requirements. If there are any tasks under requirement, you can expand them, which will display additional tasks. You can then drag and drop any of these requirements or tasks into the grids. So for example, this bulk assigned books by author requirement is not currently scheduled. It's just a new item in our backlog. We could then drag that up to iteration two, and now it's iteration two. We might decide we want to filter things. We only want to bring in critical and high and medium requirements, in which case we've now filtered our list down. We might want to add some of those into the different iterations. This lets us very easily plan the stories and requirements and tasks into each iteration. Now, also, as defects logged in the system, those will also get scheduled for different releases. And you can similarly drag and drop, as you can see here, this test defect one. You can drag and drop any defect that's come in into any of the iterations as well. And if they have an effort value assigned, that will impact the amount of time that is available for requirements and tasks. So this screen really allows you to plan out each of your iterations from the, the backlog into the different iterations, but also allows you to load balance by moving tasks and requirements from iteration to iteration to optimize the schedule. Now we also have another view of the same information that we call the planning board. It shows the same information as on that previous screen, but instead of showing it in a compact grid, it displays it in the form of story cards. This particular visualization is often well suited when you have a projector displaying the information in front of a room full of people. Whereas before, the list of items in the backlog was displayed at the bottom in that table, here you can see them at the top in this unassigned items category. All of the defects, or all of the tasks, all of the requirements are displayed in story card form in this top section. The left-hand border ticks on the color associated with the priority. So you can see very quickly the items in the red border. These are the high priority defects. Similarly for the tasks, 
and requirements, they also have a coloration. So anything orange or red, typically the higher priority item. Underneath that, we then have the main release. Any items which are scheduled just for the release and haven't yet been assigned to an iteration will appear in that category. And under that, we then have the three different iterations that we saw before. And like we did on the other screen, we can then drag and drop any of those items. So let's take this requirement from the release, and we're going to put it into the first iteration. And that will then add to the iteration. And the release is now empty. And you can see we've now added more work into that first iteration. If you see a story card grayed out, that just simply means that that task or requirement or defect is in progress, and the developers are actually working on it. And at that point, you can't move it anymore because it would impact their current schedule. To move that task, you would need to click on the icon, switch it back from in progress to not started, and then move it. One additional feature we have on this screen, which was not present on the iteration screen, is we can drill down one level further. So for example, this is iteration one in release one, and you can see there are a variety of requirements and tasks in that. We can click on the view icon, which will then show us that same iteration, but will now show us the breakdown by person. So I can see very clearly the people in the particular project and in the release and in the iteration who is working on each of the tasks and each of the requirements. Here you can see that Fred is working on tasks one, two, three, and four, and you can see that Joe is working on requirement four, five, 14, and tasks five and six. If at any time you want to get more information on what's inside a requirement or a task, you can just click on the link, and that will then bring up the requirements detail page. For example, I just brought up requirement 14 in the system. Thank you very much for attending this demo. If you have any questions about the Spire team planning or iteration screen, please contact Inflector Customer Support. We'll be more than happy to explain the functionality to you and answer any questions you might have.